All right, second video. So you went through 22 minutes of folding a dodecagon, congratulations. And now what we're going to do is make an Islamic pattern out of this. So here's the gist of it. It's a simple Islamic pattern, the one I'm gonna teach you. This actually is gonna take a lot less time than the one we just did, but hey, that's life. That's how it goes sometimes. Now we're gonna use a method that's called mirroring. And that involves in choosing certain points. Here I'm going to actually use um, a marker just to be really clear as to what, what's going to happen. So I'm going to choose six points interchangeably. So I'm going to choose here. And just let me make sure that I'm right. No, sorry, it's on vertices. So it's not that one, sorry. So one vertice. That one no, this one yes, that one no, this one yes, that one no, this one yes, no, yes, no, yes. And then repeats, no, yes. Yeah, this one you're going to have to ignore, I'm sorry. Now I'm going to take out another marker because now you don't need to do these lines that are marking, but it, it will help me to explain the idea. I'm going to connect these points. You can also, if you're doing this, actually, you can also just use the paper as a sort of ruler. You see that it actually is a six fold division. Now we have six divisions out of a square and I'm going to take out another color. I'm going to mark the line between them. So this one. Okay. And now we're going to select the points where, well, you can choose any one of these two because they are really just the same. But I'm going to choose the ones, the points that I selected. So is that point. So I'm going to just draw a little arc here on both sides just to indicate that that's the angle that I care about. That angle, that angle, that symbol that I'm doing represents a bisection. Okay. So that means we're going to bisect this angle. Which angle? This angle, the one that comes in at the dodecagon itself. So that angle is the one we're going to need to bisect. Oh, wait, sorry. So that angle needs to be bisected. We can select the angle just by folding this, the double mountain technique, or just, you know, take that line and just place it on the green line on this line that we have here. And that will bisect it. So then this fold is effectively bisected. And now we're going to actually fold this blue line. So keep an eye out where this blue line is. This blue line is right here. I'm actually going to draw the blue line on the other side so I can just for illustrative, illustrative, illustrative purposes, for purposes of illustration, of clarity. You can see here that that's where the blue line is, right? I'm going to keep this folded because they actually come together. And then I'm just going to fold this little bit, just that bit where the blue line is, just that blue line. Whoop, two. And now it does a thing. Now it did a little bounce. And what's cool about this is that we get to keep lateral symmetry. These two triangles are effectively the same triangle. And further, they are the same triangle as this one. It's not fun. Repeat this process over here. And we don't really need to fold the whole line. We just need to fold until it hits the blue. That's all we really need. We only care where it hits the blue. 
and that's where we fold the blue. Now I'm going to actually use, um, let me see if I have another color here. Just, well, we're going to cut it at the end, so let's just keep it like this. I don't want to confuse you, but there's so many elements that, you know, sometimes it's a little bit hard to keep track of them. But I think we're doing fine. I think right now, yeah, it should be fine. Let me just check one last thing, and uh, yeah, it's just a straight line. Okay. Now we bisect this one. until it hits the blue and then when it hits the blue we just fold the blue and then that angle also gets bisected hits the blue the blue right there and then this gets folded Right? You kind of see the pattern where this is going. And well, it turns out that this line is just simply an extension. That line just simply keeps on giving. And then that's, that, that's the piece. That's, that's what it is. Okay, now this angle, so we, we can select it. And we don't really need to like select it at all. We can just sort of fold it. As long as we can keep track of the point, that will be the point. And then hit it, that's the blue line. And then just make sure that when you do fold it, sorry for the turning around. Make sure that when you do fold, actually went back and redid the fold there. Yeah, just make sure that it does, it does the effect. And well, there, there are many tricks that you can try and do here. There are many ways that you can just replicate this process. One of the other ones that I can think about is, well, now you have this line. Why do all this bisection when you already can do this little thing? What thing am I talking about? Sorry for being out of focus there. I can fold this green line and you can see there very slightly that I have the line that I need on the other side of it because it has mirror symmetry. So I can just fold this there and then that does me the same deal. You know, I don't have to bisect nothing. I can just use this mirror, but if you know, if you want to be sure that you did it correctly, you are going to need to mirror. Now, why? What do I mean by correctly? It's because what happens is you actually require the pieces to be bilateral in order for them to be canonical. So, what does bilateral mean? It means that it's like it's like a human body. If you or a crab, there is a line that divides things. So. Uh, my hand is not bilateral, for instance. My hand, I, if I were to cut it down the middle, it would be a different shape on both sides if I were to cut it down the middle. However, my, 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 both of my hands have uh, chirality, it's called. These are chiral, chiral, C-H-I-R-A-L objects. That means that I can't superimpose them. I can maybe change one of them, like I can flip this and now they're superimposed. But when, if, when, it, when an object well, not this one because that one has a little thing. But these two, for instance, would be chiral. No, these would be... No, wait, sorry, sorry. This are chiral and this, these are a chiral. These don't have chirality. But anyway, a bilateral symmetrical object would be something like, well, like this. Like a human body, I mean, like you were to split a person down from the top of their forehead down to their groin. Kind of that would be where the split would happen for a bilateral. A crab would be between the eyes, down its shell. Then that would be a. I don't. I can't believe I don't have a bilateral object here around me. And the reason why I'm not pulling up, like, well, I do have a mouse. But the thing about that mouse is that it, it has decoration, so it does have some text on it. So if I were to properly split it, the decoration on it would change. So therefore, you know, it it, it would be debatable whether it actually is bilateral or not. But that's the thing that's very important in Islamic pattern construction, that your pieces in the pattern have bilateral symmetry individually. 
the pieces themselves. And what do I mean by pieces? A piece would be these shapes. This is a piece, this is a piece. And now there are other ways that you can do this through folding that's maybe a little bit more fun. The main one would be that we just keep this line, we extend it actually. We can extend this too. We don't need to extend, but we do need to be able to sort of compress. So yeah, no, maybe extension is necessary. But this one is a little bit of a more complicated approach. So I'm really having doubts as to whether to keep going with this one. But the idea being that we start to use these lines as sort of a, a mountain, the line between them as valley, and then the green lines as mountain. And what that does is that it allows us to be able to compress things in such a way that we kind of just, uh, well, this is a more advanced technique, and this actually would uh, maybe entertain Ben Parker. Because he's a, he is, uh, I would call him a pioneer, but he does research regarding these kinds of, of effects on paper. And he actually has a book out, so if you're interested in learning more, that would be a nice little subject where you can reach out to him. He has, he's very cool. You can find him on Instagram, he also has an email, Ben Parker. Um, yeah, there's, he has a book. You can probably look for Ben Parker, Origami Artist, and you'll, you'll find him. So one of the things about me is that I'm, I have uh, some kind of problem with my ego, where I'd rather be um, a username than my name. So it's interesting that some people might have heard about me, but they don't know me. They haven't heard about me by name, which I think is good because that way I can sort of keep my ego in check. I think that it does help with that. So I don't think I'm all that. But like, like I am all that, you know, like, like as if, as if what I'm doing has any, uh, you know, merit beyond a select niche, which, you know, I love you guys. Like if you guys are into this and hey, you know, you're one of mine, you're, you're my team, your boy. All right. So yeah, we could, if we wanted to, we could just highlight, you know, the, the bilateral symmetry of these, you know what I mean? Uh, but this is a pretty typical pattern. I'm actually going to extend these lines because that's that those are part of the pattern lines. And uh, yeah, here we go. So now if you wanted to maybe cut at this, you know, you could, but that pretty much does it for now. I mean, if you wanted to cut it, then that becomes a challenge in and of itself in that you have to take into account the bilateral symmetry, or rather just take the lines themselves, the blue and the greens as mountains and or valleys. So I can choose my blues to be mountains and my greens to be valleys. And so here, what we need, what we what could happen is you're gonna notice that all the lines here are underneath themselves. Like this shape is mirrored on there. So what you could do, if one were so inclined, would be to actually draw some kind of um, a negative space on this. So I can choose, like I, I can draw some line and it just has to be parallel, at least, you know, in theory. I can drew, draw it like that. And then again, I guess like that, just using kind of like the idea that, that this line that I just drew is a mirror symmetrical line. So it's here, and what I mean by mirror symmetrical is that it's a bisection, and then that goes up. And so you get a little shape inside of the shape that's itself parallel to the shape itself. So that's, that, that becomes a justification for it. Now, yeah, it's these. So then this line does extend and this line becomes like that, like this. What I'm also checking for is that the line that's on top and above, that they are the same distance from the pattern line, the blue line here, 
So if it's not the same distance, I try to course correct a little bit and just make sure that they are at least trying to be the same, at least trying to. They don't need to be exact, but you, know, you want to at least be somewhere in the ballpark. You can also make sure that these lines connect on this point just to be sure that they're sort of... Again, there are many ways you can actually do this that are proper, but we're not doing them right now. I don't know why. This line I will actually extend completely. Yeah, these will also extend completely, like that, doing a little bounce. I guess now all we need to solve would be for these shapes. What shapes are these? So I guess, yeah, same deal. Then these would come in there and this would extend like that and these would extend like this. So if I were to take out a cutting board and I would cut out these shapes, then my, my, my pattern would appear. So let's go ahead and just do it real fast. It's not that many cuts anyway. You can also cut your work short by just folding this in half. So this would be what's called the minimal triangle. This is the minimal effort of the pattern, but anyway. I need a smaller cutting table. If you're gonna use um, an exacto knife, you gotta be safe. You gotta be careful. Mind your fingers always. If you're a child, don't do this. Ask an adult for help. And uh, maybe try and be clever with how to do this with scissors. 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 Okay, so let's, let's uh, open it up and see what we got. And so there we go, that's the, that's the pattern. And so if we wanted to, we can make many of these and place them side by side and then that's your very, this is a very typical pattern. So it's very classic, you can see it all over the place. But it's, uh, it's very beautiful, it's nice, and it's easy. The real challenge is just the evaluation of mirrors, just being clear on where you want your mirrors to be. So it's a great way to play around with this idea, which actually comes up a lot in Islamic geometric patterns. So we're going to look at these, uh, this method down the line a lot more. And um, yeah, thank you for your patience, your time. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you had fun, and uh, learned something along the way. I'll catch you guys next time. Take care, have fun, and bye-bye. Uh,